Okay, 20 minute, five second game. If they're going castle and king side, these are the weak squares. Simple. Let's just bring this bishop here. Already targeting one of the key squares. Well, that's an interesting situation taken with the bishop like that. So obviously, looks like this person's just getting rid of all their pieces, unless of course they genu they do actually believe that they're um, using a technique, aren't they? Ah, right. So our king could come here, defending the knight. Shall we try that? He's attacking the king still. So we could move the king here, still defending the knight. Can we not? And the knight is not really pinned. So we could attack a higher piece with a lesser piece. If we did this, his queen then takes, doesn't it? If we brought the knight around he takes if we bring the knight here then it's moved but then the queen can still come here now that is interesting there must be a way of circumventing this attack maybe the knight come in here because then if the queen goes there to attack then at least we can escape so i'm actually going to bring oh before we even do that could our queen come here? The pawn takes. Can take the queen, take the pawn. Let's bring the queen into the game. Because they've gone for total annihilation of our pieces with one piece, which is the queen. We've now got three pieces developed. And this is really a good example of the quick and dirty tactics type thing. Because that was really quite a good attack. Um, but it started disappearing we could take like we said it started disappearing once we realized what they were attempting to do and we could block it off quite nicely with good position play so it's not having that fear anymore so now he's actually gone backwards key squares Ooh, man, mouse is clicking on there Key squares, here and here. Bishop's got this diagonal, so it's preventing the king from castling at the moment. We need to get more pieces into the game. So I think if we get the knight open here, or even the bishop, which one should we move first? Move the pawn to get the bishop up, blocking off even more of the area. You can simply block down, but... Uh, Let's get, oh, in fact, let's go here for a two on one. He can defend. He's not defending. He's come for like a fork type situation. Um, let's go with a check thing here. And let's capture here. So he can take our, and we can take here. So we're plus one at the moment. Let's just bring the bishop here. They move so fast. Like I say, I mean, they've come up with some really good moves. Um, but what we're proving and showing to ourselves is the elements of position play are really quite crucial bishop attacking the rook here ready to get my rooks into play this bishop doesn't have any protection on it so we could quite easily move the rook here just to attack So the bishop moves onto the knight. Knight can come here attacking his knight. And again, let's just go with that nice and steady. Keep it simple. And capture with the bishop. This bishop's probably going to come and take the pawn here. Key squares at the minute. Got the bishop on there. So now we've got the rook on there as well. So these key squares have worked quite nicely for us at the moment. It's not saying it's winning, but it feels pretty favourable. So he's actually dropped his bishop and they've resigned. Absolutely brilliant example. I have to go through the analysis on that one. 
brilliant example of quick and dirty tactics in its fullest form. So the push through, oh shall we get the eval bar up just to have a look and see what's the story. So they develop the knight, bring our knight up, bring the bishop across and then there's this big attack. Um, at this moment even the computer's saying not really sure what that is because we're almost out and out winning here. Then the knight comes down. These are the types of moves that put the frighteners on people, really. I mean, this put the frighteners on me. I'm like, whoa, this is um, looking quite tasty. Then the queen comes down. The engines doesn't look impressed. But I want to see if there's any dips because we went and defended with the king. And there's no major dips. Pawn comes down doesn't oh thought it didn't like that queen move then so what is it actually suggesting then let me see king c6 oh what giving up the knight no queen f6 what did i do oh that's my move i'm not seeing the predictive moves um doo -doo -doo -doo. i'll have to turn this on then once i well, that's what I did, isn't it? Is that not what I did? Let me just have a quick look at Rooney. That's what I did. So why did it jump up and down the bad then? Okay, never mind. So that's what we played. They captured. We captured. And whoa, here, yeah, this is the dippy thing we're talking about. Right, so definitely, what does it suggest here? Let me see. Oh, bringing the knight up with a 2 on 1 on the pawn. Right, so we lost the big tempo somewhere. Okay, fair enough. But the opponent didn't see it, so hey, what can you do? So we're still in an advantage from there. It didn't go below, so that's not too bad. It's not a major blunder. So then they attacked down with the pawn, we captured, captured, yep, so it was really quite frantic, it's quite scary when the opponents play like that, I'm glad I caught this one because um, this was really quite amazing. So then we brought the knight through, we had a rationale for everything that we were doing, bishop attacking the higher piece, yep, rook coming through attacking a bishop that's not got any protection on. And we came through with the knight. It's not really happy with the knight move, but I'm happy with it. Uh, so we're attacking the knight. Knight captures. We capture back. So, oh, and the bishop taking is obviously a big no-no because we can. And then they've let the bishop go. At that point, they'd have resigned. So, yeah, a good example of not being fearful of quick and dirty tactics. Have, have a moment to have a look to see, well okay what can i realistically do if your king is getting disheveled then use the king to be a good supporting king make it a fighting king rather than a king that is ready to sort of capitulate because the examples that we've worked through um if you're using the answer appropriately you're going to be putting pressure on a king that is alone even when it castles castling is nice it's good keep it safe so long as you're also supporting the spaces around where your king is based and what we're finding throughout these games that we're running through is um, the majority of players that we're playing against are leaving their king home alone in the castle with no protection around the area so it's 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 moat and it's forest and it's trees and it's garden where it's growing all its lovely um fruits and vegetables and stuff like that and the farm animals then you've got the little village and stuff they're all being left alone everybody's gone off and gone to a little party somewhere and so all of the goodness of protecting the castle has gone because the area around the king isn't being protected and they've gone off attacking places that don't need attacking got to keep your king safe king safety is not just about castling 
it's about protecting the spaces around the king while you're formulating your own attacks towards the opponent's king area.